development of radio pharmaceuticals. Now, the most important thing is when you want to do nuclear medicine, you have to see how to make the radio pharmaceuticals. Because if you, as I said, if you do not have the radio pharmaceuticals, you don't have a nuclear medicine. So in spec, we use a generator and formulate radio pharmaceuticals using live flash kits. So the regulate the generator is important. The live flash kits are important. Then when it comes to post-introduction emission tomography, we use uh, two type of radio pharmaceutical. One is actually F18 um, related radio pharmaceuticals and the other is gallium radio pharmaceuticals. All of us get the F18 radio pharmaceutical as ready to use uh, product in the clinic. It will be prepared in a cyclotron center and it will come to us as the ready to use radio pharmaceutical. Not much of radio pharmacy is involved. Whereas when it comes to the preparation of 90, the gallium 68 radio pharmaceuticals, this again we prepare from uh, germanium gallium generator. And then unlike using the, the lifeless kits in the case of technetium, we are generally preparing these radio pharmaceuticals using the peptide, the buffer, and the generator eluted gallium doing it. So when it comes to it, there is a bit more complication of uh, making gallium radio pharmaceuticals because uh, there is a little more responsibility in the with the radio pharmacist to get the good product whereas here the responsibility for making technetium radio pharmaceutical if the kit is good the radio pharmaceutical will be made in a good manner then comes to actually radio the radio pharmacy related therapy now we use uh, we have two different type of radio pharmaceutical only is we use uh, ready to use radio pharmaceuticals uh, they look about id 131 Sodium iodide comes and it is uh, used uh, like that only. The second you have this MIBG, MIBG comes. Samarium EDTMB you purchase, that is again used as a radio pharmaceutical. Then we also do this preparation of therapeutic radio pharmaceutical using radio isotopes and peptide. The peptide comes separately, the radio isotopes come separately, and there is a big responsibility for the nuclear medicine um, technologist or the radio pharmacist working there to make the therapeutic radio pharmaceuticals in the right manner. So if you look at it, the radio pharmacy uh, revolves around, one is making uh, spect radio pharmaceuticals, gallium radio pharmaceuticals, and therapeutic radio pharmaceuticals. This is where the most important training is needed for the radio pharmacist in a clinical setup. In spect radio pharmacy, what we do? We do, we have this molybdenum technetium generator. We can simply put a vial and we can get the pertechnetate. Then we can do the formulation of radio pharmaceutical using the kits. And a large number of a variety of kits are available from either Brit or outside. Then we are mandated to, to, to do a small quality control of the radio pharmaceutical before injection. If the kit is not that good, the radio pharmaceutical need not be good. So a small quality control of the radio pharmaceutical is mandated. Then we also have to know what is the stability of the radio pharmaceutical. Some of the radio pharmaceuticals have got very good stability and some of the radio pharmaceuticals have got very poor stability. So we should prepare the radio pharmaceuticals uh, generally just before administration to the patients. Then the radio pharmacist will also do an administration protocol. This will be advised by the nuclear medicine physician, then imaging protocol also need to be done. So this is typically the activity of the radio pharmacist. Now let us learn a bit about the molybdenum technetium generator, because this is the key point of nuclear medicine. You know, if you would have visited a nuclear medicine center before 2000, the whole nuclear medicine center would have been revolving around the use of molybdenum technetium generator. So I would like uh, the, my, my participants to learn a bit about um, molybdenum technetium generator. Now the question is why do we need a generator? Can we not buy a technetium 99 itself from the, from, uh, the center, from the production centers? No, it is very difficult because it has got a short half-life of only six hours. Sorry, I just a call it. Hello. Yeah, there. 
Am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We yeah. can hear you, sir. Please continue. Okay, sorry for that uh, call. I thought it must be from one of the organizations actually. Sorry, otherwise I would not have tackled. So, technetium has a short half-life of six hours. So, difficult to transport. And most of the isotope will decay during the transport. So, it is always better to buy the parent. The parent is actually molybdenum-99. This has got a half-life of 67 hours. And uh, molybdenum and technetium are two different two different elements, so we can separate it uh, very nicely by using a chemical method. That is why we prefer to buy the generator and not the technetium-99. As you know, there was a shortage of technetium-99, um, molybdenum-99, molybdenum generator, technetium generators. So then there was a, pro a provision to directly make technetium-99 from the cyclotron and supply it. Some of this is not really picked up in the market. Now, how does the, the molybdenum technetium generator work? Because the molybdenum 99, uh, this has got a, I told you it has got a half-life of 67 hours. It decays to technetium 99. This has got six hours half-life. And the technetium 99 is radioactive. We, we call it as a, there is a 99M technetium. It uh, gives an isomeric transition. Iso, sorry, this is, beta minus is not right. In isomeric transition, it goes to technetium 99G. And this has got a half-life of very high half-life, almost about 200,000 years. Then technetium 99G will decay to ruthenium 99. So essentially, we will consider only these two radionuclides. That is the molybdenum 99 is what we are purchasing it. And the technetium 99 is what we are using it for making radio pharmaceuticals and they're doing nuclear medicine imaging. And this, of course, decays to technetium 99G. And this is, we consider it radioactive, but um, the half-life is very large. Now, if you want to have a generator, the half-life of the parent has to be more than that of the daughter. Here it is an ideal condition. The molybdenum has got a half-life of 67 hours. Technetium has got a half-life of six hours. So the parent has got a half-life greater than that of the daughter. Now, the next one is, if the ratio is less than 10, it is called transient equilibrium. So if you divide, um, you know, 67 by 6, it is about 10, 11. So we call it the molybdenum technetium generator is a transient equilibrium. And if the ratio is more than 10, it is called secular equilibrium, around 10. So we know the germanium gallium generator. The germanium has got a half-life of nearly nine months. Gallium has got a half-life of only one hour. So we call it as a secular equilibrium. And uh, it will be important for you to study what is a transient equilibrium and what is a, a secular equilibrium and how the radioactivity uh, keep decaying and keep growing. I will not get into that details in this uh, lecture. So this is the molybdenum decay graph. The molybdenum 99 is there. It decays about 87% of molybdenum decays to technetium 99, which is what we use it for imaging. About 12% of it goes to directly to technetium 99G. This is not available for imaging. So this is what we try to separate it. And both the technetium 99G will decay to ruthenium, which is a stable element. 